Um, Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look here at some proofs. We're going to do 2.6 cursor. 2.6. Proof statements about segments and angles. Well, uh, first, let's get a definition down for a proof. And um, a proof is a uh, lo logical argument. A logical argument that shows a statement is true. And um, proofs use um, deductive reasoning. So um, you're going to see a lot of like facts and definitions and things like that. You're going to use those in order to make your logical argument. Uh, there's, not, there's not any patterns, looking at patterns. So it's all about the deductive reasoning. And there are several formats for proofs. Um, the one that we use and what most high schools teach are two column proofs and the reason I think that these are the most common is it, it really ensures that everybody has a matching reason with their statement because uh, one one column is statements one column is reasons and that's important you can't make a statement without having a, a, an explicit justification for it so two column proofs are the most common, but you can also have a paragraph proof, which is basically they're just kind of telling, telling a, a proof story. They're writing it out in sentences and in a paragraph, but you're still gonna have a, a justification for every statement that you make. Um, it still needs to flow and be logical. It still needs to make sense, but you can write paragraph proofs. And finally, for those people that prefer kind of visual arrangements, you can do a, a flow proof. And with a flow proof, you'll have like kind of boxes and arrows, and you'll see visually how things, uh, how one thing leads to the other. And they, they can be helpful um, at times. Uh, but again, um, it's a little more complicated because you got to make sure that every you know box that you draw has a justification for it and things like that. So we are not going to examine these any further. We are going to stick to two column proofs. And uh, right there it says two column proof has numbered statements under one column and corresponding reasons that show an argument in a logical order. So. Um, What's interesting is a lot of your two column proofs, you check with your neighbor and they may not be in the exact same order because some things can be interchanged and done in a different order. But for the most part, you're gonna start at the same place and end at the same place. So um, let's do a little example um, of a proof. We're given a, a drawing here of line segment RU. It's got S and T on it as well. And on our proofs, we're going to have a given statement. We're going to have some information that's given. Sometimes your given is just the picture. They'll say, given the following picture. And then you're also going to have a prove statement. Now, they did give us some information here. It says that the measure of RT is equal to the measure of SU. And I usually like to, to, if they tell us any measurements are congruent or equal, I like to mark it. But it's a little bit tricky because RT is right here, isn't it? So I don't want to complicate my picture too much, but I'll kind of do like a, a dash there. Like that, just to show that distance. And, it, and I'll put a little tick mark on it. And it also says that SU, so RT is equal to SU, so now kind of below it, I'll, I'll do the same, same sort of thing. I like to be able to look at my picture and, and know everything that, that we need to know. 
So now I can see, oh yeah, okay, so this measurement is the same as this measurement because of those tick marks. And our goal is to, to prove that RS is equal to TU. All right, so any proof that you do is going to start the same. You're going to write what was given. We were given that RT was equal to SU. Now, if you're given is just a picture, you may have to like infer things. If you see tick marks, you're going to say, oh yeah, so RT is equal to S SU that was given in the picture. You may have to, to observe some things. And then your reason for this is what? Given. Yeah, it was given. So we should always start with this. Always start by putting that there and writing our reason is given. And then um, from there, uh, this proof was, was written, um, well, they, you can start it out a couple different ways, but this proof, we start out by saying that ST, which is in the middle there, is equal to ST. So that's kind of cheap though. It's kind of, it seems kind of silly. And I'll be honest, it seems a little bit unnecessary here. I understand why they want to do it. Um, we'll see in the next step. But um, what justification can you give for writing that ST is equal to ST? Reflexive property. Reflexive. Yeah, it's that silly reflexive property. And it's a uh, property of what? Equality. Yeah, it's a property of equality. We do want to know that. Well, um, the reason they did that is because the next statement says that RT minus ST is going to be equal to SU minus ST. So I think the reason they did the reflexive property was just, just to make it clear to everybody, this ST is the same as this ST. But is, is there any question about that? I, I don't think so. So I kind of feel like this is a little, little bit not needed. But um, let's see if this, uh, where this statement's coming from. It says, um, well, it doesn't really say anything here. We've got RT is equal to SU, that was given. And now they're subtracting ST from one side and they're also subtracting ST from the other side. Yeah, so, so it's a subtraction subtraction property of equality. Say, say what? I'm sorry. You would get back to it. Yeah, you sure would. But I think um, the reason I did this was because RT minus ST is what measure? Yeah, we're getting, we're getting closer to what we're trying to prove. So let's take a moment and write that out. That RT minus ST is equal to RS. Now, that makes sense to us, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. The reason it makes sense to us is because of the um, segment addition postulate. If you look at a picture and you see that, oh yeah, the whole thing is made up of parts of the smaller segments, that's going to be the segment addition postulate. If you're looking at angles and you see, oh, the smaller angle plus the other smaller angle adds up to the bigger angle, which postulate is that going to be? The angle addition postulate. Okay, so whenever you see these kind of intuitive statements where it's saying, oh yeah, that one minus that one equals that. Those are going to be those addition postulates. Uh, we can also say that SU minus ST, see, SU minus ST is equal to what? TU. And wasn't that the same sort of reasoning? Yeah, exactly. And I might be tempting to just go uh, 
tick, uh, what, com, comma, or whatever it is, um, you know, just saying the ditto, ditto mark, but go ahead and write it out. Um, what you'll find when you do more complicated proofs is sometimes you'll, you'll have to rearrange things and you want to make sure to be crystal clear which reason went with each segment. So go ahead and write it out again, segment, addition, postulate. Couldn't you put the side number four equals number five, so it's technically the same? Say what? Couldn't you put uh, reason four equals reason five? Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> let's not. Let's not. That sounds that sounds a little <laughs> just write it out. Just write it out. Okay. Now finally. We're we're ready to wrap this, this up. I'm gonna say that RT is equal to SU. I mean T U. Sorry. Oh, it's because I wrote the wrong thing. So sorry. We're ready to finish this up. RS is equal to TU. But what's my justification? Suggesting that's the substitution property of what? The quality. The quality. What do you guys think? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, to say it, we got to be pretty certain about it. How on earth would the substitution property of quality get us to this from these statements up above? Because we know that RT minus SP equals SP U minus SP. Okay. So we know that. All right. I'm with you. Oh. The substitution of like an RS or PD over and we know that RT minus ST is equal to RS, so you can substitute that there, can't you? Yeah. Yep, you can substitute it there. What else can you do? So we can substitute it there, and yeah, I agree. Substitution property of quality gets us there. Substitution property of equality will wrap things up. So um, again, you're not going to have to do a two column proof in this chapter from start to finish. You're going to have a proof set up, you're going to have some holes in it, and you're supposed to fill them in. Are you guys with me on this? Yeah. Okay, so now something I want to point out is your last statement needs to be what? The proof. What you were trying to prove. That's where you gotta end up. So a little bit of a heads up, if you're wanting to get some partial credit and you have zero idea how to do the proof, what are you gonna write? That at the end. You're gonna write the given up top and you're gonna write what you're trying to prove at the end. And that'll get you some points, won't it? Yeah. A little, little heads up for you slackers out there. <laughs> All right, now, um, so, so here's, Here's something important to realize. All these reasons, um, they can be, um, they can be definitions, postulates, properties, or you're going to find out about theorems. Um, all these reasons, except for the given, are going to be def from definitions, postulates, properties, or theorems. Uh, some geometry courses, they, they make you have like two notebooks. So you, you got like one, one notebook or binder that's kind of doing your day-to-day -day stuff. And then you've got this separate smaller notebook or binder where you have a list of what? Definitions, postulates, properties, or theorems. Because when, when you're working through a proof, it's kind of handy to have those all just listed out so you can look at them. So these are all going to be in our notes. Um, but if you wanted to, on your own, um, 
write, write them out separately and, and have them in a separate maybe section of your binder or something like that. That could be helpful if you're, if you're kind of curious. And if you want, because online there's all sorts of proofs that people can, can um, uh, posit to you. They, they, can, they can, proofs that you can work out yourself. And so it's kind of interesting to, to do it. Well, uh, let's talk about what a theorem is. A theorem is a statement that can be proven. So here's the interesting thing. Once you have proven a theorem, you can use that theorem as a reason in other proofs. And so some um, theorems are so common that you're kind of expected to, to use them and know them uh, right away. If you don't, you, if you don't, um, if you don't accept them as true, then it's kind of it's kind of difficult to, to move forward because you got to list everything out. Um, theorem two point one is called the congruence. of segments theorem and it says some familiar things it says segment congruence is reflexive symmetric and transitive did we have those properties of equality yes those were properties of equality well now we can use them as properties of what not equality, but congruence. It's a subtle difference, isn't it? It's a subtle difference. So um, normally we would say AB is equal to AB for the reflexive property of equality. But because we're talking about shapes and not numbers, because remember this is measure of AB, right? This is measure of AB equals measure of AB. I agree with that. But this is talking, now we're going to be talking about the shape of AB. Segment AB, and when we're talking about the actual shape, we don't say they're equal, we say that they're congruent. So the reflexive property of congruence says segment AB is congruent to segment AB. It's a subtle difference, and it's something that you can prove, but um, I don't really get what that is. It is what it is. Because like A, B, and A, B are the same segment, aren't they? Mm-hmm. So like, what's the even point of saying that? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, the, the example that comes to mind, Owen, for me is the fact that uh, later on we're going to prove triangles are congruent. And to prove triangles congruent, one way to do it is to say that each side, each pair of sides is congruent. And when you do that, oftentimes you're going to have to say that AB is congruent to AB. That's going to be one of your set of sides that you have to show are congruent. Right. And so it's just, it's, it's, I agree, it seems kind of silly. Yeah. And it mostly like, is. It's yeah. like saying it is, but it is. It's like, yeah, what else would it be? Yeah, exactly. Well, um, the symmetric property of congruence says if segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Do you guys know how to finish this? Mm -hmm. no, segment CD, CD is congruent to segment AB. You got it. CD is congruent to segment AB. And then the transitive property of congruence says if segment AB is congruent to segment CD and how we're gonna to have to start the next one. CD is equal yeah, to exactly. EF. And segment CD is congruent to something else. We'll call it EF. If you know that these are congruent and these are congruent, what can your result be? AB is congruent to EF. And segment AB is congruent to segment EF. And guess what? Theorem 2.2 says the same stuff, but not about segments, but about angles. 
congruence of angles theorem. So if we're talking about angles, we could say for the reflexive property, angle A is congruent to what? Angle A. Angle A. We could say that if uh, you guys could probably finish up the rest of these notes, couldn't you? Um, do you want me to just be quiet? Or I, I, I can talk, I guess. You can ignore me. If angle A is congruent to angle B, what else do we know? And angle B, angle B is congruent to angle A. And transitive property, if angle A is congruent to angle B, and angle B is congruent to what do you suppose? Angle C. Sure. Angle C. Then what can we say? That angle A is congruent to angle C. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's practice identifying these um, theorems. So it says uh, name the property illustrated by each statement. And here's the thing, it's not it's not a property. It's a what? Theorem. Theorem, yeah. Name the theorem illustrated by each statement. I suppose it's a it's a I guess you'd say it's a property within a theorem, but anyway. What relationship is illustrated in example A? Symmetric? You guys cool with that? Yeah. yeah. Now, be careful. What do we got to say? Symmetric congruence of angle. Symmetric um, and yeah. Theorem of angle congruence. Yeah, let's do um, TLS. Hmm. Do we, do we need a good acronym? I'm not sure that. Symmetric. Um, mm, theorem. Of angle congruence? That seems complicated, doesn't it? Check. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But yes, yeah, symmetric theorem of angles congruence. Um, and then for the next one, if segment AB is congruent to segment FG and blah, 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 then blah, blah, blah. What do you guys think? Transitive. Oh, which one is it? Segment. Yeah, segment. We'll say theorem of segment congruence. Man, that just doesn't seem very helpful. Theorem of segment Congruence. I'm going to think more about what would be a good shorthand for those because I, I don't necessarily want you to have to write all that out. But there you go. So um, does everybody feel like they got an understanding of how proofs are set up? Yes. Okay, does everybody understand you got to start with the given, you got to end with what you're trying to prove? Yes. That's huge. Is everybody also comfortable with the fact that once you prove something, you can use it in other proofs? Yes. And that's where theorems come about. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, the practice for this is page 117. Numbers 1 through 13. Skip over to 16 through 18. And then skip over to 21 through 22. And I think you've got a little bit of time, don't you? Oh yeah, you got like 14 minutes or so. So go ahead and knock out. I bet you can get halfway done. Or more. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's maybe one or two that you you don't have to do from scratch. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Why? Why? Why?